Hi, Carrie. Hi, sorry for the delay. We had some technical challenges. All right, well, we're glad that you're here now. And um, let's kind of get started. I'll, I'll do a little bit of your bio and let everybody know a little bit of who you are. And then we're just going to roll in and get started. So Casey, uh, Carrie, Casey West is a life story coach. She uses her entertainment industry experience to support her clients with their life and business stories. And she is the author of Memoir of an Ordinary Person and the Stories that Changed Her Life. This is gonna be out later this year. So welcome, Carrie. Thank you, it's wonderful to be here. Tell me so why you're so passionate about telling stories. You know, when I went to film school, I, I always knew I was a storyteller. I love stories. I like the impact they have on our world. And at the same time, I was dealing with my incredibly difficult upbringing. I, I really had a, a treacherous, in many ways, upbringing. So I was at the at the same time I was in film school. I was dealing with that. When the middle middle of one of our story development classes, I realized that my life was a story. That it had a theme. It had a plot. It had characters. It had villains. It had heroes. It was the whole thing. It had. It was a story. And I and and you know when you work in the business when you work in the entertainment industry they talk about creative differences somebody left a project for creative differences and I said well I'm going to leave this story for creative differences I don't like the way this story is going and I have literally turned my life around in such a remarkable way there's times that I just can't even believe what I've done in my life that I put together a template and I started sharing it with people to great success. It's it's a lot of fun and you have very fast results. So I put it together in a book and I'm um, taking it out to the world. I love this. I, I want to say when, um, I, so I call my kids pups, but when my pup was in college, she was in a project and she was her typical doing all the work. She was doing all the work and it was, she was the only lady on the team and it was a bunch of dudes. And then the one guy's like, well, I will do the interviewing. They were, the, the thing was around a podcast. They were podcasting people in the community. So they're college kids they are, you know, interviewing these folks. So she did all the scheduling, doing all this stuff. And he's like, I want to interview. And she, you know, he, he took off doing that. And her thing to me, her statement to me was like, this has to stop because I do not want to be a background character in my own story. So I'm going to speak to the professor and make sure that I have a starring role. And so what you're saying, there's always that point in your life where, holy cow, I don't know that this story plot is going where I want it to. I need it to go somewhere else. How do I go about doing that? And I love that yep. you have a process for doing that. So how do you, you know, even start to realize that your story is in the wrong way? And how do you go about making a, a different turn, taking, you know, taking that chapter in a different way or that story in a different way? One of the key things that happened for me was I realized that I, like your daughter, I wasn't the star of my own story, that I was living my life to get my dad's approval or my mom's approval or to get somebody's approval or to get somebody to say, um, welcome to the world or just it was an outside I was looking for some outside validation and I just said wait a minute where do I fit into that story I'm not I'm not the star of my own I don't have top billing in my own story I'm I'm student in second row reading a book, you know, I'm, and in scripts in Hollywood and scripts on television shows, they say that, you know, character, second character in back row, you know, and, and so I realized, dang, I'm not the star of my own movie. And I came up with this byline with the tagline for my book, I'm going to share it here, so don't tell anybody yet, is who would who would play you in the movie of your life? Hmm. And that's a big clue. Would you have a a star like a big star like who is a big star these days? Um, 
I don't know. I'd, uh, I'd pick Emma Thompson. Why not? Yeah. Would Emma Thomas Thompson play you in a movie? Or would it be a character actor that we don't really know the name of or, or you have a familiar face, but you don't all you can't recall their name so easily? I mean, I it just would Margot Robbie play me in a movie? Nope. Margot Robbie wouldn't play me in a movie. I I would hope I could get Meryl Streep now that I have the same hair color as her. But <laughs> but the point is, if you're not getting a, a an A-list celebrity to play you in a movie, that's a big clue. That's a huge clue. So you you really have to become an observer of your life. You have to sort of step outside and see yourself as an audience member that's participating and viewing your life as it plays out in front of you. And when you do that, you start to see, wow, wow, I cannot believe that I am not having a life that I dream of having. And so I did this with a, a client and within five sessions, he called me and he said, I'm, I'm a new person. I'm a new man. I'm ready to move on. And he has just had the most amazing life. So it's taking a moment. You get these aha moments that say, oh my God, I know exactly what I need to do to fix this or to change this. And once you do, you start writing a new chapter. You write a new scene. You write a new book. And, and you can, you don't throw away the other one because it's really an important part. In every story arc, you start off with an inciting incident that gets you to change and sets you on this journey of transformation. So celebrate, celebrate that inciting incident that sets you on this path. And then you can forgive it and let it go. That's the forgiveness is another huge step. Once you get on this path, how do you how do you really move beyond that first basic origin story that you have and through forgiveness and understanding why you get there it's very exciting so i'm very visual so as you're saying this and now i'm thinking like who else would i want to play me right my brain's doing a little bit of that but it, when you're talking about the transformation and thinking through like parts of my life story like even if the, the start of our life doesn't feel like we're an A-lister, right? You could still have an A-lister play you. And my thought went to um, uh, Sandra Bullock in um, uh, Miss Congeniality, right? In the beginning, like her life is rough and she's like tomboy and she's like barely existing and like slouchy and all this stuff. And you wouldn't necessarily pick her out now if you know Sandra Bullock, you would still, but she has that whole like literal transformation from, you know, tomboy FBI uh, chick to like ready for the runway. And I feel like that is what I'm going to grasp onto this. Like, okay, it doesn't matter if I didn't start, you know, looking like the A-lister and being like the A-lister, I can take that story in that direction. I can change the, the story of my life, but my, I'm wondering how do we do this, Carrie? How do we get started on that? Like, what do we? What is the next step I have to take to make sure that an A-lister is running my my movie? Right. Yeah, it's it's exactly what I did. It is exactly what I did. I I went from um, a mouse that was hiding to somebody who has confidence and stands tall. And the way you do it. You, you start by observing. You start by becoming a viewer of your own movie. And then without judgment, because there's no judgment here, then you learn to say, huh. But the biggest thing you really do need is who do you want to be? That's huge. Who do you want to be? And if, if you don't know who you want to be, anybody can fill in. If you don't know who, who you'd like to see play you in the movie, then any character, any actor can be screened and cast in that role. And, and it's funny because I've been on casting calls. I've been sitting there while we brought in actors and actors and, and actresses to, to read for a role. 
and you kind of say, do I see them in that role? Hmm. Hmm. Could they, could they have the emotional depth that this, you know, this character was really traumatized. I was very traumatized. So it's like, hmm, could they pull off being traumatized and healing their trauma to become a better person or become a happier person? Because trauma holds us. Trauma can really keep you stuck. And I had to deal with my trauma. And could I see an emotional shift where they're going to heal their trauma and become a better person where they'll start to trust instead of trying to control everything. And when I, when you look at it that way and you can see the depth in a character that says, yeah, I can live with the fact that I was traumatized. I was not treated very well. That led me to trauma. And I can talk about that with you now with absolutely no energy around it. There was a time I couldn't even talk about being traumatized without feeling tense and, and triggered. So understanding my trauma, healing it, releasing it, set me free. And then, but again, what really did it was I was inspired to be a new character in my movie. And just like Sandra Bullock, I love that. I love that um, analogy. Oh, and yeah, but she had to get over her judgments of what it meant to be a beautiful woman. She was, she judged them. She thought if she put on makeup and dressed nice, that made her a sellout. She mm -hmm. liked being a, a tough tomboy type for whatever reason. But she decided to help the job. She would take this step and become this beautiful woman. And the benefits were crazy. And she realized that there was nothing wrong with taking advantage of being the beautiful woman that she was, embraced it, and became even more beautiful inside and out. So and understood herself in the process. Right? right. Exactly. Exactly. And now she's this empowered person who, who just took charge of her life and was even happier. Found out that wearing makeup was not going to destroy her life. It's it's so funny, isn't it? How that happens? Yeah, for sure. We, you know, we, we get not only the story that we're playing, but we get stories in our head about what things mean. And that's something else we got to deal with, right? That's right. <laughs> so Are we do we have just... a question here from uh, Jackie. She said, how mm -hmm. did you grow your self-belief and self-awareness following your trauma? Uh, that's a good one. Trauma is debilitating. And, and even today, I can get triggered by something that reminds me that has this emotional connection. One of the things I did was taking deep breaths. <laughs> you know, I'd get real centered, put my hands on my chest and breathe into being in my present state rather than letting the trauma become my present state. And every time I did it, it got easier and easier. But then I added a little touch, which is the trauma was from an older time when I was a baby, when I was two years old, whenever, whatever the age was. So I would go to that little one that was me. And I would hold her in my arms and say, I'm here and I love you. You are never, ever, ever alone. I'm here and I love you. You are never, ever, ever alone. And it's amazing to me how we have that power within ourselves to, to heal ourselves like that. And Every time I did it, the trauma had less and less impact on me. And the other side of it is I started to really believe it's almost like, um, uh, what do you call them? You put them on the mirror, affirmations. It's affirmations. almost like daily affirmations. When you tell yourself enough that I'm here for you and I love you, you start to believe this. You're holding your inner child and saying, I'm here for you. I love you. And in yeah. fact, I'm doing it now. And I just feel so 
cozy and safe inside myself. And if and if I can take a little liberty, I would ask everybody where you are. Let's all say this. Here, if you can lead us, let's all say this to ourselves yes. out loud. No one else can hear you. So say it out loud to yourself. I'm here for you. I love you. Hold, hold them by the hand. Take their tiny little hands. Feel this little hand. It's so soft and tender and precious. And hold it in your hand and bring it to your heart and say, I'm here for you. I love you. I'm here for you. I love you. Wow. I you hope you are the, that where you are because that's really yeah, powerful. I'm here for you. I love you. And it just, <sighs> well, this Take has been break. amazing. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, um, you know, there's this connection and changing the thing. Do you, do you have a specific process? Or is there a, a specific step that we need to take besides, you know, connecting and realizing that we want to change our life and knowing that we're going to have to do some actual steps to change the way. Our, is there anything else that we need to like action we need to take to turn our story to what we want it to be? Yes, um, know that it can be fun. I think anybody who goes on this journey of self-realization and self-awareness and change thinks, oh, I got a journal every day. I have I to, I have to work really hard. You don't. The process of change can be fun. And that's why I like it, making it a movie. It's, it's, we all love a good story. We all love a good movie. So why can't our life be that good story and that good movie? It should be right. I don't, yeah. you know, when you think about this, it makes me think as well, like if if you've ever had the thought, if somebody wants to have you on a podcast or wants to hear you talk about your life and you're like, oh, my life isn't worth talking to you about. If you've ever had that thought, you definitely should be paying attention to what Carrie's talking about today. Because I yes. think it all, it's at some point, all of us have been like, oh, who want, who would want to hear that? And today's summit proves there are a lot of people that are here that want to hear this. So. Yep, that's right. That's right. Everybody has a story to share. We need to share them. Well, and I did want to ask Carrie, it's, we're, we're closing out here. Uh, we're ending our time. Did you have a free gift for everybody in the audience today and those uh, watching the, uh, the, the video? I do. I have a free gift. It's um, a downloadable for the way four, way, four ways we stay stuck, what gets in our way. And there's a bonus, 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 fifth way, a bonus fifth way we get stuck. And if you like, I am happy to give you a free 15 minute call for the VIPs to join me on a, on a um, free call for 15 minutes to see if there's a fit, maybe, maybe you do want to talk about a story because our stories are important. Our story. And, and I'm adding a new section on my website called what's your story where I'm interviewing people to be, to share their story. So stay tuned for that Love too. It. So if you guys haven't got the gift, this alone makes getting the VIP if you haven't done it yet, get this, you get 15 minutes with this amazing woman to talk about your story and how you're going to make that change. This has been awesome. Our next speaker up is going to be Vicki Dello Joyo. She's going to be talking about the three treasures, the secret sauce for authentic communication and connections. Your energy matters most. So I hope you will stay with us and join us for that talk. But before we go, I just want to ask Carrie, what final words of wisdom do you have everybody that is watching this today? I think we can all be happy. There is no reason why we can't be happy. And I would love to see everyone on this call, everyone at this summit today, next year, where they say, even if you don't even hear my thing, but whatever inspired you at this workshop, this weekend, this day, that you came back changed. 
And, and we want to hear your story next year on Voices of Women. That is yeah. right. Let's yeah. do it. Let's well, thank you so much, Carrie. I'm glad we got things worked out and you were able because you have just delivered a very powerful session for everybody that's been involved today. Thank you so much. Thank you. I loved every minute of it. Have a great day, guys. Wow. That was another amazing session. We hope you enjoyed it as well. If you haven't already upgraded to VIP, now is the time. Grab all the recordings of all of the talks and VIP gifts worth thousands of dollars. For any questions or concerns, please email our support line at support at voicesofwomensummit.com. We will be back in a few moments with our next amazing speaker.